So today we're going to talk about everything regarding email. First, I want to talk just kind of on a very, very basic level how email works. Email, the term email stands for electronic mail and without a doubt has become the most common form of online communication. Um, even before social media and Facebook and Instagram and all this, uh, email um, was and still is really the most common form and the most popular form. You can compose a message. You can send your email to one person. You can send it to a group of people. You can reply to emails. You can forward emails that have been sent to you. And an email address gives you an online identity. And what I mean by that is, um, in, you know, in the past, when I, have, when I have taught people who are kind of brand new to the internet, I've had a lot of people say to me, you know, I don't want to get email. I don't want to do social media. I just want to get on the internet and Google stuff. And that's fine. But if you don't have an email address, then it's, it's not a two-way form of communication. You really need an email address so that you can join websites, shop online, join um, social media networks if you want to, to conduct business. With, with an email, it allows you to have a two-way conversation, taking part in online discussions, chat rooms, blogs, online group forums, and so on. An email address identifies a, a, an email box or electronic box in which email messages are delivered. The way I kind of compare uh, an email address or email is very much like the U.S. Postal Service. You need an address, a physical address of where you live in order to receive mail from the post office. It's the same thing with email, except it's all done online. So here is one of my email addresses. Um, and to kind of break out what we're looking at here, the Bookham Dano part is considered what's called my username. So when I signed up for Gmail, I don't know, 18 years ago or however long Gmail's been around, when I first signed up for Gmail, I was hoping I could get danieljones at gmail.com. Well, that's, I, that was going to be impossible because there are thousands, if not millions, of Daniel Joneses in the world. So getting danieljones at gmail.com, I couldn't get because someone else got that username before I did. So I typed in danjones at gmail.com, taken. dgjones at gmail.com, taken. I tried every variation of Daniel Jones and DG Jones and everything for gmail.com, and they were all taken by some other person in the world. So I thought, okay, my nickname is Dano. I'll go with Bookham Dano. We all remember Hawaii Five O, and he would say Bookham Dano. So I thought, okay, I'll come up with Bookham Dano. And Bookham Dano was not taken. That is my username. That is unique to me. There is no one in the entire planet that has Bookham Dano at gmail.com. It is unique to me. So my username is unique. The other part of the email address is what's called the company server. This is where your email lives, who manages, what's the company that manages your email for you. So my username is Bookham Dano. You wanna email me at gmail.com. Gmail is a Google product. So to look at some other email addresses, Bookham Dano 2, D Jones five two uh, five one two at rochester.rr and so on. These are are some of my other email addresses. The end part is where my email lives, who the company who stores my email for me. So that's kind of the anatomy of an email address. Email addresses do not need to be. Um, case sensitive. So if I type in a capital B or a capital E 
it doesn't, doesn't make a difference. Email addresses are not case sensitive. What's important with email addresses is that you can't have any spaces and you have to include the at symbol. If you don't include the at symbol, the email will not go through. So I use the, the US Postal Service as, a, as the kind of the example of how email works. You have an address, you have a mailbox. You take mail, you put it in your mailbox, you turn up the flag on your mailbox, that gets picked up by a truck that delivers it to a local postal service or postal uh, area. It bounces around with several mail trucks until it finally reaches its destination. And in this case, John Smith wants to mail Betty Jones a letter. That's how it works. We're all familiar with this process. It's the same process with email. The key is the address. You have to have an email address. And if that email address is not typed in correctly, it will not be delivered. So you take the basic same concept, but instead of the postal service, your email is delivered via the internet. And your email that gets sent out is going to travel through the internet, is going to bounce to your internet server first, and then it might bounce around to one or two or 50 different internet servers globally until it finally reaches its destination. And the beauty of email is that you can, you can open your email in multiple devices. And of course, the best thing about email is that it takes a matter of seconds as opposed to days to deliver a message. So we're all familiar with that. We all know kind of how that works, but you may not have kind of, kind of thought about it, actually. A lot of us just kind of do it without really thinking too much about it. And this type of email is called cloud email or web-based email. Gmail is definitely probably the most popular form of cloud-based email out there. And for purposes of today, I'm going to be when I'm giving you my demo, I'm going to be giving you a demo in Gmail. I don't know how many of you have Gmail accounts. Some of you might have Yahoo or AOL or Roadrunner or Hotmail or whatever it might be. Um, but fundamentally, they all work the same. But we'll talk about Gmail. The reason it's called Gmail is because it's from Google. Gmail is one of the 80 or so free services that Google provides. Gmail is email. Many people, um, not, not so much anymore, but uh, maybe if, up till about maybe a few years ago, people, people would say, well, I don't, have an, I, I don't have an email account. I have a Gmail account. Well, Gmail is email. It, the G just stands for Google email. Gmail is free. Um, the great thing about Gmail, because it's from Google, you have what's called a search-based um, service built in to your, into your Gmail. So it's much easier to find your particular email if you have loads and loads and loads of email in your inbox. Because Gmail is web-based email service, it means you can access your email from any computer or smartphone anywhere in the world, 24-7, 365. That is the, the real huge benefit of cloud-based or web-based email, like Gmail, AOL, Yahoo, is that you log into your account on any computer, on any device, anywhere in the world, and you can access your email. I've got a, a short video here that talks about talks about email, talks about kind of how it works, and also talks about the difference between kind of the old way email used to work. And when I say old way, I mean Roadrunner email or Frontier email. If you are a Roadrunner email user or a Frontier email user, you are using a kind of, I, what I say, an, kind of an archaic form of email. And I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit um, in a little bit, but let me show you this video. 
Before she knew what happened, the damage was done. Pam's thoughts raced. Her first thought was email. Those messages mattered. The next day, she went to her IT team and asked for help. When the discussion turned to email, she was relieved. Her email was safe, but she didn't really know why. Her IT pro explained it with a quick overview. He said that when she uses her computer to access a web page or do anything online, it connects to computers called servers. These servers connect her to everything she needs, including email. Every person with an email address has a mailbox on a server. When email is sent, the servers make sure it gets to the right address. But it's not that easy. Email doesn't always work the same way. For example, in the past, her email lived on the server until she checked email. Then it would be moved to her computer and deleted from the server. Roadrunner. Her computer held it all, which meant everything could be lost if something happened. Pam knew that feeling. Nowadays, it's different. Her email lives on the server and her computer at the same time. And they work together. When she deletes or organizes email on her computer or device, the server makes the same changes. This means she can also manage email on multiple devices without confusion. And that's the key. Because servers can keep email safe and organized, she has more freedom. And that's not all. Email on the server also means she can use a website to get to her email. This is called webmail, and it allows her to log into her mailbox from any computer or device with an internet connection. For Pam, that's serious freedom. She can use her computer at home or work, her device on the road, and even use shared computers when traveling. And the whole time, the server is keeping everything in line and safe from spilled coffee. So kind of the, the old way and the new way, and I'll use, I always pick on Roadrunner and I always pick on Frontier. Um, with Frontier and Roadrunner email, it, it's fine if you have one device. If you only use a laptop and you don't have a smartphone or have a tablet or anything like that, and you're only using email for one device, Roadrunner is great, Frontier is great. The trouble is when you have multiple devices, and most of us nowadays have multiple devices. We have a smartphone and we have a laptop. And we might have a tablet. And what happens is with Frontier and Roadrunner email, when you open that email on one device and manage that email on one device, let's say you, let's say I'm on my phone and I spend an hour on my phone cleaning up my inbox. And, and, and really cleaning everything up in my Roadrunner or Frontier email. I've got to do that same thing on my laptop or on my tablet. If I have multiple devices, all the time that I've spent cleaning up my email on one device, I've got to save, do that on multiple devices as well. Because, um, because it's not web-based email like Gmail and... Um, AOL and, and so on. And I'll, I'll talk about this a little bit, a little bit more.